Hello, this is Lance Cleveland. Today I'm going to go over some of the testing tools that I use to test my WordPress plugins for Store Locator Plus. I'm working on an update to the Premiere plugin that allows URL controls and other uh, features, and I want to run through and make sure that I can test the new features as well as the existing uh, application. For those of you that are not aware what Selenium IDE is, it's a plugin for Firefox that allows you to record and run scripted actions in the browser. You can also do advanced testing of user uh, interface elements. So I like it a little bit more than unit tests for front end stuff, which Store Locator Plus is very front end heavy. I can check things like CSS rules. I can check to make sure that my X paths are correct and those sort of things and I'm getting the results I wanna see. Uh, so today I'm going to go over some of the things that I use now with uh, rollups. So rollups are basically a set of commands that run inside of your uh, test case. So if you've not done this before, I've actually created an SLP rollup JavaScript file. And I've put this in my folder where I keep all my Selenium tests. Of course, it's all part of my Git repository. And you can see to start a rollup, you set up your JavaScript with your var manager equals manager or new rollup manager that's built into the Selenium IDE. And that's gonna give you the class that you need with all the methods to create your sets of rules. And as you can see here with this first rule, it's my check for syntax errors rule um, that I run a series of commands. I set the speed of the browser so it runs through and checks these text values are not in the page. And all I've done here is put in some basic errors that come up if there's a syntax error in my code. And I'm running in debug mode in WordPress. This will actually flag it as a failure. And to run those, I go into my um, Selenium IDE test, and I just run a rollup that checks for syntax errors. So uh, in these cases I'm running here, uh, set active plugins actually calls a rollup. Rollups can call other rollups, but you can do check for syntax errors. It'll auto-complete it for you and uh, allow you to do that. So, <clears throat> so that is uh, how those rollups work. Now, one of the things that I've learned uh, over the past few days that makes these rollups far more powerful is the ability to pass in parameters or arguments. And uh, for example, one of the ones that I'm doing here is to open my various tabs in my application. And you can see here with this open tab uh, rule, I've added this arguments section. And this arguments section allows me to specify which tab I want to open. So that way I have a single command called open tab, and I can use it to open any of my tabs within the browser. And so what this does is if I go into the admin panel here, so you can see the URLs. Here's my different tab names, the page names. It's going to build that URL automatically and open it for me. And if I bring up my Selenium IDE interface, you can see how I use that here where I'm opening my tabs. I just call roll up open tab and then the name of the tab. And you just specify it like this here in the IDE interface. And you can use that to automatically run through a series of scripts. So as you can see in this script here, I'm running some of these rollups, some with parameters and some without. And basically going through, checking stuff off, making sure that the elements are visible, uh, and going through different things, different combinations of my settings, like allowing limits in a URL, allowing location in a URL, turning them on and off, and then checking when I open my locations page, I'm getting a single result or three results or five results as expected. So that's a brief introduction to some of the more advanced features of Selenium IDE. In this case, rollups with argument passing. There's an article on my lance.bio blog that goes with this video if you want more details. And that's where I kind of keep my cheat sheets, uh, both for you as well as for myself. So three months from now, I'll forget how I did all this and I can just refer to my blog and find it. Hopefully you find it useful. Hopefully you can use this to help you write more resilient plugins and automate inputs and those sort of things. As always, thanks for watching.